Welcome once again, my friends, and thank you for stopping by to listen to an old storyteller. Today we have a story from Russia, and the title of this story is The Treasure. In a certain kingdom, there lived an old couple in great poverty. Sooner or later, the old woman died. It was in winter, in severe and frosty weather. The old man went round to his friends and neighbors, begging them to help him to dig a grave for the old woman. But his friends and neighbors, knowing his great poverty, all flatly refused. The old man went to the priest, but in that village they had an awfully grasping priest, one without any conscience, and says he, Lend a hand, Reverend Father, to get my old woman buried. But have you got any money to pay for the funeral? If so, friend, pay up beforehand. It's no use hiding anything from you. Not a single kopeck have I at home. But if you'll wait a little, I'll earn some, and then I'll pay you with interest. On my word, I'll pay you. The priest wouldn't so much as listen to the old man. If you haven't got any money, don't you dare to come here, says he. What's to be done, thinks the old man. I'll go to the graveyard, dig a grave as best I can, and bury the old woman myself. So he took an axe and a shovel and went to the graveyard. When he got there, he began to prepare a grave. He chopped away the frozen ground on the top with the axe, and then he took to the shovel. He dug and dug, and at last he dug out a metal pot. Looking into it, he saw that it was stuffed full of ducats and that shone like fire. The old man was immensely delighted and cried out, Glory be to thee, O Lord! I shall have wherewithal to both bury my old woman and to perform the rites of remembrance. He did not go on digging the grave any longer, but took the pot of gold and carried it home. Well, we all know what money will do. Everything went as smooth as oil. In a trice there were found good folks to dig the grave and fashion the coffin. The old man sent his daughter-in-law to purchase meat and drink and different kinds of relishes, everything that there ought to be at memorial feasts. And he himself took a ducat in his hand and hobbled back to the priests. The moment he reached the door, out flew the priest at him. You were distinctly told, you old lout, that you are not to come back without money, and now you slunk back again. Don't be angry, father, says the old man imploringly. Here's gold for you. If you'll only bury my old woman, I'll never forget your kindness. The priest took the money and didn't know how best to receive the old man, where to seat him, and with what words to soothe him down. Well, now, old friend, be of good cheer. Everything shall be done, said he. The old man made his bow and went home, and the priest and his wife began talking about him. There now, the old hunks, they say, poor, so poor, forsooth, so poor, and yet he's paid a gold piece. Many a defunct person of quality have I buried in my time but I never got so much from anyone before. The priest got under way with all his retinue and buried the old crone in proper style. After the funeral, the old man invited him to his house to take part in the feast in memory of the dead. Well, they entered the cottage and sat down to table, and there appeared from somewhere or other meat and drink and all sorts of snacks, everything in profusion. The reverend guest sat down, ate for three people, looked greedily at what was not his. The other guests finished their meal and separated to go to their homes. Then the priest also rose from the table. The old man went to speed him on his way. As soon as they got into the farmyard and the priest saw they were alone at last, he began questioning the old man. Listen, friend, confess to me. Don't leave so much as a single sin on your soul. It's just the same before me as before God. How have you managed to get on at such a pace? You used to be a poor peasant, and now, Mary, where did it come from? 
Confess, friend, whose breath have you stopped? Whom have you pillaged? What are you talking about, Father? I will tell you the exact truth. I have not robbed, nor plundered, nor killed anyone. A treasure tumbled into my hands of its own accord. And he told him how it had all happened. When the priest heard these words, he actually shook all over with greediness. Going home, he did nothing by night and by day but think that such a wretched lot of a peasant should have come in for such a lump of money. Is there any way of tricking him now and getting this pot of money out of him? He told his wife about it, and he and she discussed the matter together and held counsel over it. Listen, mother, says he, we have a goat, haven't we? Yes. All right, then. We'll wait till it's night, and then we'll do the job properly. Late in the evening, the priest dragged the goat indoors, killed it, and took off its skin, horns, beard, and all complete. Then he pulled the goat's skin over himself and said to his wife, Bring a needle and thread, mother, and fasten up the skin all around, so that it may not slip off. So she took a strong needle and some tough thread and sewed him up in the goat skin. Well, at the dead of night, the priest went straight to the old man's cottage, got under the window, and began knocking and scratching. The old man heard the noise, jumped up and asked, Who's there? The devil. Ours is a holy spot, shrieked the peasant, and began crossing himself and uttering prayers. Listen, old man, said the priest, for me thou wilt not escape, although thou mayest cross thyself. Much better give me back my pot of money, otherwise I will make thee pay for it. See now, I pitied thee in thy misfortune, and I showed thee the treasure, thinking thou wouldst take a little of it to pay for the funeral, but thou hast pillaged it utterly. The old man looked out of the window. The goat's horns and beard caught his eye. It was the devil himself, no doubt. Let's get rid of him, money and all, thinks the old man. I've lived before now without money, and now I'll go on living without it. So he took the pot of gold, carried it outside, flung it on the ground, and bolted indoors again as quickly as possible. The priest seized the pot of money and hastened home. When he got back, come, says he, the money is in our hands now. Here, mother, put it well out of sight and take a sharp knife, cut the thread, and pull the goatskin off me before anyone sees it. She took a knife and was beginning to cut the thread at the seam, when forth flowed blood, and the priest began to howl. Oh, it hurts, mother, it hurts. Don't cut, mother, don't cut. She began ripping the skin open in another place, but with the same result. The goatskin had united with his body all round. And all that they tried, and all that they did, even to taking the money back to the old man, was of no avail. The goatskin remained clinging tight to the priest all the same. God evidently did it to punish him for his great greediness. Thank you once again for listening to this story. If you enjoyed this story, please press that like button. Also, Please help an old storyteller out by subscribing to my channel. The next story will be posted in a few days, so until then, may your story continue to be a good one.